the Wool Bowl in Roswell. Right now, though, we are having a conversation with Alexis Martinez Johnson, who is running for Congress as a Republican in the 3rd Congressional District. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for having me, Gene. Yeah, from Roswell originally, but you uh, went to college at Vanderbilt? Yes, I did. What was your uh, major? Well, I ended up coming back. My grandma uh, was the one who cared for me. I was raised by my grandparents, and so they're in Roswell. And she got sick with Alzheimer's. I came back home. I ended up graduating there from New Mexico Tech with an environmental engineering degree. And then I worked here in and around this area in the Permian Basin. I'd I head back and forth from Midland to Hobbs, from Hobbs to Jowl and Carlsbad, all over this area, making sure that we could provide jobs, produce energy, and do it respectfully in regards to our environment. And, uh, you know, I'm running because I think that we're being stifled by this Biden administration. And, you know, I was raised by Democrats, but my Democrats raised, my Democrat abuelos raised me very Republican. And today, you know, I just can't vote for anyone that's going to try to end jobs in New Mexico in this the oil and gas industry and anywhere here. So how'd you wind up in Santa Fe? Well, you know, I was I tried to find a job after I graduated New Mexico Tech and you know everyone said, Oh yeah, you go into something hard and, and you're gonna be set and I couldn't find a job in New Mexico. No job. So I interestingly enough I said, you know what? I met my husband there in uh, at New Mexico Tech and I said, I'm going to just apply as a secretary, and I'm just going to work. I don't care. I'm not going to be highfalutin. I'm going to work. Mm -hmm. I applied as a secretary, and they hired me as an engineer there in Midland. So huh. um, that's one thing about who I am. I'm a very humble individual. I'm very determined, and I just want the best for our kids, you know. And um, this race is very important. A lot of people here used to have Congresswoman Yvette Harrell on, Congresswoman, excuse me, Yvette Harrell on their ballot. We've been redistricted with the census. So in December, that's changed. So please look at your voter registration card, or you can even update that and uh, see what district you're in. If you see Alexis Martinez Johnson, Republican, on that ballot, I'm here in Artesia. I'm here to represent you. And, you know, I was raised with faith, family, and freedom, and those are the values that I hold true. Yeah, so, but you get to Santa Fe uh, working for this company that you got hired by, or... Um, after I, you know, started re rearing my kids, I have four beautiful children. Okay. I even have twins. I got a two for one special. <laughs> thank the Lord. So, uh, would you um, like to meet someone who has four? <laughs> sure, sure. I mean, they born at the same time. Oh my Qu goodness. Quadruplets. Uh, yeah. There's oh, a gosh. couple of families like that in Artesia. But, oh, wonderful. But two is probably good. <laughs> Are they identical or? Uh, no, they're they're not identical. But uh -huh. um, one's a boy and one's a girl. So okay. uh, yeah, you know, I told my husband I want to go back to New Mexico, mm -hmm. and I wanted to, you know, live there in Santa Fe. And then when I got there, I, you know, was living there. I started to hear things about wanting to take our gun rights away, and that really was the straw that broke the camel's back because you know, people out there want to do away with guns. And I'm thinking, you know what? Our freezer is filled with meat that we hunted mm -hmm. and with the prices being so high inflation just being out of this world with no end in sight out of control spending with biden and this administration you know we have to make sure that we are secure in our homes i as a woman with my four kids i want to make sure that i have a firearm as an equalizer i don't want anybody to tell me where and when i can't have that um you know in the park there in santa fe they wanted to say that any public uh, own facility place in regard to parks etc you would you could not have a firearm and I'm thinking with the crime that we see not only in Albuquerque and up north but everywhere Artesia, Hobbs, Roswell there is crime and this administration and the people that are running this state are just running us into the ground you know I don't want to be fearful for my life and then have my firearm taken away so these are other reasons why I wanted to stand up and say you know what you don't own us because I'm a Hispanic woman. The Democrats think that they own my thought process. And I said, you know what? I'm Republican. I'm proud to be Republican, and we're going to take this seat. You know, this this is going to be a close race. Everybody needs to get out and vote. If you think that oh we're we're Republican in this area, we don't need to. That's not right. Every single person that votes here in Artesia will help for the greater New Mexico and the United States. So how is how is your message being received in the northern part of the district? Uh, you mentioned again you're running against uh, an opponent who I think is a water rights uh, lawyer and has advocated for that. And uh, you know. I don't know how well that goes over in this part of the state because we, we're fully aware of the water issues that we have here, but we have a different perspective. So how, in this part of the state, you're probably getting very good reception, but when you take your message to the rest of the 3rd Congressional District, what, 
what do you hear? What are what are people telling you? Are they receiving your message? They are receiving my message. So this District 3, it goes all the way from Navajo Nation out there in Shiprock near the Four Corners to all to the east side, which is Clayton. You know, you got Dulce, you got a lot of the Native American community. And then you start going into the center there where you have Las Vegas, Española, Santa Fe. And, you know, those are... I have no problem walking around in those areas because I was raised in a in a traditional Hispanic family. So you know when I knock on the door and I say Buenos dias, me llamo Alexis Martinez Johnson. There is no issue. They open the door and they welcome me because I'm a daughter of New Mexico and I'm fighting for all New Mexicans. And it's about time that we had leaders in this state fight for all New Mexicans, not just saying, oh, you know, the governor said Republican attackers. Attackers, that word is so charged. You know, we got families here, we have children, and I never will go up to a child and say, excuse me, are you a Democrat or Republican family before I assist you? We need to be helping everybody. And I think, you know, Biden has done nothing but divide us and run us into the ground. You know, that speech he gave just recently about um, if you if you care about election integrity, if you care about um, anything pro-life or anything of these causes, you're an extremist. Well, you know what? Diversity is not only skin color, it's also, hey, we need to have diversity of thought and make sure that everybody's heard. We still have that First Amendment, and we can say and do as we please. And we don't need to be discriminated against in Santa Fe or anywhere else. I have a right to speak, and I'm standing up for the voices of our children and hardworking families here in Artesia, Roswell, and all of the southeastern part of New Mexico to say enough is enough. A democratic monopoly is not delivering. You uh, you mentioned that part of your district includes the the Navajo Nation. Part of the reason the redistricting was done the way that it was was to uh, ensure that that population, that part of the state, had uh, an opportunity for representation. What's been your reception uh, there on the Navajo Nation? Great. I'm a very diverse candidate. You know, um, when I go to Navajo Nation and I speak in Navajo and I say, yat a and I, that means, you know, hello, it's a greeting. And we get along just fine. You know, our, my ancestors here coming out of Carlsbad and being raised in Roswell, you know, we had Native American in our, in our family at some point. That's why, you know, I, I look the way I do. Some people consider, they say, what tribe are you from? And I said, well, I'm, I'm Hispanic, you know. So, um, but yes, we do have um, a great communication there. And so this candidacy is just great because I can go to various communities and I meld well because from the north to the south, there are fundamental elements that we should all care for. We should all be supporting our freedom, our rights, our families, opportunity, and being safe within our own regard. And right now, those are all at the end of the list for New Mexico. And I have a message to all the Democratic uh, individuals out there and all the independents and said what have you got to lose we're the 51st in the nation for education at the bottom of the list we're the highest second highest in crime in the nation what have you got to lose you know we are here to support our children in all of New Mexico and please vote for Alexis Martinez Johnson on the Republican ticket a couple of issues I want to ask you about what you get elected to Congress you go to Washington DC um, maybe the Republicans take over Congress. Uh, on the issue of the, the border and immigration, what, what will you support, what will you be pushing for uh, as a congresswoman? That's one of my main tenants. So there's three tenants that I have that I'm going to be working on in U.S. Congress as your next congresswoman. Number one is going to be that economy and making sure that we have American-made products, or at least North American. But the second one, and equally important, is the border. It, there is no compassion on that border right now when you talk about 50 plus people dying in a semi truck trailer. That is not compassionate. And you heard the Vice President Kamala Harris said the border is secure. Well, that's an outright lie. There's not even any spin on it. They're just outright telling us lies. We all know that the border's not secure. And we know that the cartels have instituted the border uh, organization and it's inundated with crime. And so we have to have security on that border for American safety, for Mexican safety, for the safety of people from other uh, South American, Latin American countries. You know, why are we subjecting individuals to high-risk situations with children involved? You know, I'd like to see more processing centers so that we can have people that want to come up from Mexico, if they want to work, to have their work visa, and why can't we have 
more facilities. And yes, we do need to make sure that the drugs, uh, the fentanyl that's coming over the border is not killing our children. We try to have a good life, send them to college. They go take an Adderall to study for some chemistry class and it's laced with fentanyl and they died. I mean, I just read in the paper somewhere in a state, somewhere in our nation about two young uh, kids dying in the bathroom of high school overdosing on fentanyl. And this is a huge problem. You know, it's not like it was 50 years ago. We have a, uh, something that is addictive and a killer in our community, and it needs to stop. And the Biden administration has turned a blind eye, and they call that compassion. Well, I don't know any mother or father that turns a blind eye to their kids and what they're doing and call that care or compassion. So I'd like to, number one, when I get office, uh, secure that border, streamline that process. Okay, you want to come over to the United States and work? So be it. You know, you want to work in the oil field and agriculture or be a teacher? Great. Let's get you processed. You're paying taxes and let's get with the system. But we can't have people trafficked on that border, uh, women being taken advantage of, children walking alone in the desert. That's disgraceful. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you on the, on the energy uh, or on the economy. You mentioned the economy. On one hand, we have Congress and the president spending billions and billions and trillions of dollars. And on the other hand, we have the Fed raising interest rates because the economy is too hot and we have high inflation. What type of economic policies would you like to, would you support or would you like to introduce to take, to improve the economy or the economic situation that we're in right now? It falls in line with our energy production. You know, Biden has gone to Venezuela, he's gone to Saudi Arabia, you know, speaking with uh, killers there, right? And then he really needs to be coming to Artesia. He needs to be coming to Hobbs. He needs to be coming down over to the southeastern part of New Mexico and also in Texas and also Farmington up north where we have a plethora of natural gas. And he needs to talk with Americans first and say, how can we come to the table? And I guarantee you, our oil and gas companies will come and bring the energy that's required to make sure that we can bring down these prices. So I would say that, you know, we need to have a conversation, and I will be having those conversations as your congresswoman, to advocate for this community, to advocate for the community that provides all the money in New Mexico for our education through the entire state. It comes from this area. So, you know, that supply chain is key in making sure our economy is in check. And the, you said there were three key issues. Uh, did we touch on all three, or I, th I think economy was one, uh, and what was the third one? Uh, so the economy, mm -hmm. it deals with the supply chain, the border, and then the third one, for a mother as myself of four beautiful children, I am really concerned with the well-being of our children. You know, you know, we saw a few months ago a baby put in the trash in there in, in hops, mm -hmm. and that was a travesty. You know, what is going on in our community where we're having these kinds of situations? I want to make sure that if there's any children that are falling through the cracks as far as um, not getting what they need, that we address that. And as a community here in Artesia and, and Hobbs, we step up to the plate. And that's what I want to see in U.S. Congress. I'd like to see funding to make sure that our children are taken care of and that they become a citizen, you know, uh, upstanding citizens. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I would like to see, and I would advocate for anything revolving around the welfare of our kids. Okay. Well, we're, we're at the end of our time segment. Uh, go ahead and tell everybody how they can read more, learn more about you, and and uh, where are you going to be in in the area today or this weekend? Or yes, you? I will be in Artesia all today. You okay. can go to my website, electalexis.com. You can give me any advice. You can talk to me about questions that you want to have answered or the voice that you want to put out there. Facebook, I'm at Alexis Johnson NM. Twitter, same thing, Alexis Johnson NM. But please like and share on my social media. This is going to be a close race, and I need your vote. Vote Alexis Martinez Johnson, Republican for U.S. Congress, representing Artesia and District 3. Thank Very, you for your time. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Hope we get to see you again before the election happens. And uh, best of luck to you. Gracias. Ah, well, I think that's thank you. Yes, sir. <laughs> I know it is.